Hi, this is Ned Siegfried from Siegfried & Jensen. As proud sponsors of BeliefCast, we hope you are inspired by Todd's weekly podcasts, which contain so many courageous stories of recovery and personal growth. Remember, it's not what happened in the past that matters, it's what happens in the future. We invite you all to work hard and be optimistic about your future. Enjoy today's podcast. Here we are again, everyone. This is Todd Sylvester with the Todd Inspires Belief Cast. Thank you for tuning in once again. Um, I appreciate all your support. This has been fantastic. We um, are doing really amazing things, but it's because of you. So thank you so much. I need, uh, I need to give a shout out to our sponsors, Thread Wallets, Siegfried & Jensen, Wasatch Recovery, um, Mountain View Spine and Orthopedics, uh, Living uh, Recovery Interventions, and uh, uh, a few of you silent sp- uh, sponsors. I want to thank you too for you know, helping support this, and you know who you are. Uh, the music that you're going to hear at the beginning and the end of this is by Paul Cardall, uh, a really good friend of mine now, and I'm just grateful for him. And uh, I'm just excited. Today's a little different uh, podcast that we're going to do here today. I've got my uh, long life friends with me today, uh, people that I love so much, and uh, they're my best friends. And we're, we've been, you know, friends for decades now. And uh, here we all are. And we're going to talk about some crazy things today. We're going to talk about life lessons. We're going to talk about funny things, just you know, friendship and that kind of fun thing. And so I'm going to introduce everyone. I have we have Scott Forbes, Drew Tovey, Mike Pratt. He goes by Sean. I don't know why. That's another story, uh, but I'm never calling him Sean. <clears throat> and then we have Dean Thompson, and uh, these guys are amazing people. And we're just going to talk today and have a good conversation. I think you guys will love this. And so Scott, maybe we start with you. Tell us just a little bit about you. Um, Sly, thank you um, for having us. This is going to be a lot of fun today. I think we're in for some good laughs. Uh, my name is Scott Forbes. Uh, father of two, uh, now five, with my wife, Stacy. Um, our kids range from 32 to 17. And um, I own a dog treat company, uh, boyboypets.net.com. <laughs> <laughs> We're already in trouble here. We're already in trouble. <laughs> um, I've known Sly for 40 plus years, and uh, we have a lot of fun history that goes way back. And yeah. um, <laughs> The group of guys here today are very special to me. They are my brothers, um, and uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun today. So, Tove, to you. Uh, my name is Drew Tovey. I have a uh, father to two sons, 29 and 25, Tanner and Tyler. Yeah. Uh, grandfather to a two-and-a-half-year-old, Tatum. Um, nice. I work in landscape uh, business. I own my own landscaping company called Turfworks. There's no turfworks.com. Um, but Do you have a dot .net? Dot, no, dot .net. Oh, dot .org. Dot .nothing. Uh, anyway, Sly, thanks for having us here. This should yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah. Somebody just bought that, by the way. Someone's Probably. Right now. Have yeah. fun with it. Yeah, have fun with it. Take all the residentials you can get. Okay. Uh, Sean Michael Pratt, as Todd uh, said earlier. <laughs> We'll get into that, I'm sure, when we're talking. Um, I am a father of three daughters. Mine range from 35 to 13. Yes, wow, you heard dude. that. Yeah, twins, right? The twins, young. two 13 year olds that are keeping me young. Um, I uh, work at a startup company uh, in nutraceuticals, and uh, I don't have any plugs for that. So. Uh, <laughs> But we've uh, we've all been friends for man more years than I think I want to mention uh, over forty now. But uh, yeah, this will be fun. We see each other probably not enough these days, right? But enough that uh, yeah. you know we keep in there. So I'll keep it going. So here's Dino. Hi, Todd. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you bet, man. Uh, I'm married to my wonderful wife, Paula. No kids. Uh, Work for a company called Hood Packaging and live here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I'm just happy to be here today amongst my friends. And you've been at Hood for how long? Almost 25 years now. Jeez, that's amazing. Seriously, truly amazing. Well, here we are, guys. 
Um, it's funny, like, <laughs> you guys got all quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> it's funny, when you turn on the mics, everybody's like, oh, boy. Right? A little different. Again, we're just here having a conversation. We're just having fun. Um, thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been through a lot, but uh, let's talk a little bit about growing up together. We have some crazy stories. Um, I, we were just talking. Um, I was just you know, reminded by Dean when we were walking home from junior high one day, and uh, Dean's walking with in the snow with no shoes or socks on, bare feet, <laughs> and didn't know anything different. He was the happiest person I've ever seen, just Sounds skipping good. around, and some lady pulls up, rolls down her window and says, hey, Sonny, put on your shoes, and he's like, shut up, old lady, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he just keeps going, you know, and that was just Dean. I mean, I think you, you know, showed up to baseball tryouts with no cleats on, no socks, no nothing. No glove. Get, no glove. <laughs> yeah. Gets up to bat, <laughs> and we have this fly in our room that uh, is going to join us here today, but uh, funny, I mean, that's just one of a thousand stories that uh, I remember of you, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I did just kind of enjoy myself and just took it moment by moment and day by day and just enjoyed growing up with all you guys I mean it was always just a pleasure to play baseball basketball football I mean it seems like we were always together and always yeah. traveling together and always in sports together and uh, just hanging out and having fun and uh, loved my childhood yeah Yep, and, and Dean's r unique, right? Wouldn't you guys agree? Oh, oh, a lot of, lot of <laughs> like sliced <laughs> green peppers in a sandwich bag. <laughs> That's right, the green peppers. Just walking around. I'd like to mention that Dean does have shoes on today. <laughs> oh, that's true. That is, that is a step up. I yeah, think I, that it's amazing how <laughs> Dean's transformation from where, when, you know, the, the multicolored hair, fruit basket earring <laughs> start off of college to being the first one of us to graduate college, get his life in order, and... Uh, you know, Dean, I mean, you've been the bedrock for so much of us. Uh, yeah. Backstory, another backstory. Um, Dean bought a home in Sandy, Utah in the, the late 90s. And uh, shortly thereafter, um, fell in love with his now wife. And they moved into the, the home she had in Sugar House, which left this home in Sandy um, where his father lives um, with some space available. And uh, Dean provided that space to all of us. For many many years, um, the the home became known as the home for wayward husbands. Um, <laughs> I had multiple incantations for years in that home, and multiple for me as well. Drew had multiple. Um, many of our other friends who weren't here also had stays there. But without it, um, I wouldn't have had a, a nice, safe place for my kids to grow up. And Diener, I I cannot thank you enough. And I just want that to be on record that how appreciative I am for you to have that. And that house is still there. Um, and, uh, it's an amazing place. And, and, and Scott's still in the garage. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> no, I've moved on. Thank you. <laughs> no. But yeah, uh, well, and cool. I want to point out too, cause think about it. I, I, every parent thought Dean's going to be this wayward person. He's going to, you know, the guy has no discipline. He can't do this, that. And, and like you said, Scott, like you were the first one to get his degree, he got his life together. We're all trying to, you know, hold on to his coattails. And I love it because Dean didn't care what people thought of him. And I think that's yeah. one of the things I love about you, Dean, is you didn't care. You just did you. And that was really inspiring. I was always like, I was a follower. I was nervous. I was like always trying to be like someone. And Dean was just like, I'm doing whatever I want. I love that about you. And in fact, I'm going to park my Celica right in your front yard. <laughs> just leave it there to leak oil. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And well, no, thanks to you, Todd, because, you know, without you and your family, you know, I spent a lot of time with you guys. You guys are family to me. And yeah. um, I'm not sure what I would have done when I got out of high school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was just kind of thinking, oh, I'd just start work and life would work out and I'd, you know, get going. And, you know, you decided to go to St. George and to go to Dixie College and, uh, you know, encourage me to maybe do the same thing or we talked about it. Yeah. And, you know, last minute I decided to do that and got an opportunity to go there and started going to school and realized that uh, it was where I wanted to be and kind of what I wanted to start doing. And so um, thanks to you and your family, you know, for giving me some guidance and getting me going in a good direction. And it's funny, once you get going, things seem to work out. Where did you finish school? Uh, University of Utah. Go Utes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice plug there. Well, and you had Scott. great support from your, from your dad and your mom. Yeah, no, I mean, it, went down there. I also had great support from my family and from all my friends. I mean, really, you know, I mean, why I'm here today is uh, because I do love my friends and love talking about all this stuff. And just 
really appreciate um, all the time we've had together and we'll hope to continue to have together. A yeah. Ritz cracker was never safe down in St. George. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, uh, you know, Drew threw out the Celica parked in my front yard for about a week and a half. And the story behind that is my, my front yard was a bunch of rocks and <laughs> Dean being Dean didn't care. <laughs> He comes in going 40 miles an hour and locks it up in my front yard uh, with a Celica, you know, and kind of embeds his wheels into the rocks, and it's right there dead center in the front yard, and then he couldn't start it. It's leaking oil. It's like, and we had to leave it there. We couldn't get it out. We couldn't push it. We couldn't anything. We, so we leave it there, and my dad comes home, and he's like, what happened? I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> First of all, it's in the front yard, <laughs> in the middle of the yard, and my dad's just like shaking his head because he knows Dean, and Dean's been around in our house a lot. Uh, he was a, a, one of the one of the kids actually, and uh, anyway, so he's like, get, "Tell Dean to get this piece of shit out of here." You know, I'm like, "Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we're we're working on it, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and here we are, a week and a half later, and it's still parked in the front yard. <laughs> and my dad, my dad, you know what? Hey, you can drink, you can. You know, get a 2.1 GPA. You can party till 3 in the morning. <laughs> Do all these things. Everything's fine. But you park in the driveway it, the wrong way or the yard, he loses his cool. <laughs> he comes home one day, and he just loses it. He's like, if you, if Dean doesn't come up here and get this piece of, you know what, and just goes off. And uh, it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And Dean just being Dean, it just never faced him. He's like, well, we'll get, well, I'll get there, Todd. I'll, we'll figure it out. I'm like, Dean, I'm going to get killed. Come get this. Slight. <laughs> Tell him, uh, talk about your dad's reaction to the table that Justin and I broke. Oh, yeah, that's another oh, funny story, right? So there was a visual for that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, um, again, this was back in the partying days for me. Um, we, I, we were, I, I was going to school at Dixie. Dean was down there, and Pratt was down at uh, Cedar City. S, With, S, so, and Cross and I were also at SU. And they were also down there as, as well. Anyway, so we come home for a weekend because my parents were going to be out of town, so we throw this raging party, and uh, – <laughs> And I, you know, I don't want to get busted throwing this party. So I throw everything in my parents' room that has a lock on it that will break. So we throw everything in there. You know, you guys helped me do that. And we left out one really piece of crap coffee table. Uh, it was just out there in the open, right? Just where you'd normally leave a coffee table. and Glass and, coffee table. Too. Yeah. And I think it was, it was you, Rass, and was it Justin? It was me and Justin. Yeah. yeah. Just you and Justin? Yeah. yeah and two big boys. <laughs> <laughs> decide to sit on this coffee table right well eventually this thing just collapses <laughs> under the weight of these two big guys and uh and i'm i'm sitting there, oh great what am i going to do so we we get rid of the evidence but i don't have a new coffee table to replace it so anyway we have this party we clean the house up we put everything back where it is you, it's the cleanest the house has ever been right and my dad comes home from his trip and we're, and that goes on for like a couple of weeks. The coffee table is gone, and my dad doesn't even notice. And I'm thinking, got away with it. We're good, right? Well, one day, uh, one night, uh, we're watching the news, and we always watch MASH after that. You guys remember that? And my dad's reading the newspaper, and my brother's sitting on that side of him. I'm sitting over here in, in another chair. And my dad literally, and I, I hope I can describe this for the listeners, he opens up his newspaper and then he kicks his feet out to put it on the coffee table, what he normally would do. And he's sitting there going, moving his leg up in the air. There's nothing there. And he, and he puts the paper down and looks, there's no coffee table. And he goes, where the hell is the coffee table? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm keeping my cool. And my brother, Sean, loses it, just starts busting up laughing. And I'm like, Sh and I'm looking at my brother, shut up. Because I'm like, oh, what do you mean what coffee table, Dad? We're trying to play dumb. And, and anyway, it was just one of those funny moments that we've laughed about this for decades. And my dad's just one of those guys that, and, and you know, oh, okay, we don't have a coffee table, get a new one kind of thing. But it was it was a funny time. <laughs> Man. So, do you remember, I know you all do, but when we uh, got earrings for the first time. <laughs> now, you talk about your dad. He, he oh, has his points where he gets, you know, upset, and he has his points when he doesn't. And uh, tell us a little bit, Todd, about uh, the string of us that decided to get uh, an earring yeah. and come home for the first time to your dad. 
Yeah, so this is, again, way back uh, in the 80s when, you know, earrings, if you had one, was really kind of rare. You know, now everyone seems to have an <laughs> earring. Um, so we're at the mall, Cottonwood Mall, walking around and just being kids. And, you know, I can't remember who it was. Hey, let's all get an earring. Maybe it was you, it was Dean. Dean. I, probably Dean. It was Dean. Everyone blamed Dean. If you notice, like, <laughs> Diablo? Whenever something Diablo went Thompson. Wrong, That's yes. what he is, Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not kidding you, and I feel bad for Dean back then because he always got blamed for everything, which half the time it wasn't uh, 95 percent warranted. <laughs> but yeah, maybe. But anyway, it was probably Dean that says, "Hey, let's let's pierce our ears." So, and we all decide, well, "Yeah, let's do this." So we all get our ears pierced there at the mall, right? Or you know, and and we're thinking we're cool all of a sudden, and you know, we're driving home, and everyone's like, "Well, hey, let's go show your dad, Todd." And out of all the people, we thought he would think it's pretty cool. Right. <laughs> and um, so my my recollection, you might you guys may ever share your what you remember of it. But so I'm thinking, yeah, he'll love this. So we all go walking into my house. My dad's on the back porch and we all come walking out and we're just standing there talking to my dad, waiting for him to notice. And then he notices we've got earrings and especially on me. And he just goes red and just livid. And I, what I remember he, what he said was. Oh, he goes, you know what? You better take that out of your, your ear because if you don't, go go downstairs, put on one of your sister's dresses, pack your bags, and get the hell out of the house. <laughs> and I look behind me, and everyone's gone. <laughs> All my buddies bail. That's because we and were uh, throwing the uh, <laughs> earrings into the bushes. Oh, yeah. I literally have to I take it out. I throw it in the bushes in the backyard, and I get lectured for an hour of why he thinks <clears throat> earrings are bad. And I'm just like, out of all the people, I'm like, Dad, come on. It's no big deal. It's, it's an earring. You Was know? he standing there in his short terry cloth robe? Probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah, terry cloth robe. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Crazy time. But but my dad, you know, he uh, he just wanted, I guess, and I think he wanted me doing something different because he knew I was going down this path. <laughs> because I have to say this, and I hate to admit this, but I think within that month i got an earring i ended up shaving my head and then i got a five on the act <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and all of this is happening not particularly and, in that order not to mention did you have the van at this point no this is before the van <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute <laughs> but i Toyota. but during that month also i had passed out in the bushes right by my front door i guess i was trying to get i don't know i fell over and i was laying and sleeping in the bushes and my dad found me so all of this happened within a period of time and so my dad's thinking man i'm going off the the deep end here and so i think that's why the earring was so sensitive put him to over him. the top he was just like oh my <laughs> now he's got an earring what is going on <laughs> right? you fit a year or a lifetime's worth of partying into a short span yeah i think yeah i yeah. think so you yeah. went pretty hard well you did yeah. i mean we all did but i, I think, think we, we all did were, yeah you know i came up with the brilliant idea on the earring thing of breaking the front of the earring off and just, and just using the stem <laughs> <laughs> which i then went to bed and that stem got lost in my earlobe oh because it went turned, up into oh no uh, then turned into a great big infection oh, and i man. got busted about three weeks later <laughs> for having an earring. i didn't real i didn't yeah. realize that yeah i thought it was a good plan yeah but and i uh, think out of all of us dean kept his in the whole time i think he did right I think I did, yeah. No, I did, and I, you know, I talked with my mom about it. She wasn't overly happy about it, but she went along with it, and I had it uh, through probably my first couple of years of college, or maybe even through college. Well, that's where the yeah. fruit basket came <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Sly Dean. calls me one day. Hey, Toby, Dean's coming home this weekend. Can you talk to him? I'm like, yeah. What's oh. going on? Well, his hair is jet black, <laughs> and he's got a fruit basket <laughs> hanging out of his ear. Oh, right. I'll tell you. I got to tell you this story. It, we go to this party down at Dixie. And it's all the football players, all these people from Vegas. And we're talking big, big guys. I mean, guys that can, you know, they're men, right? And we go to this party. Dean's got the, I think at this point it wasn't jet black because he tried to dry it, uh, dye it back to the original color and it turned orange. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So it actually looked like this off color orange, like the puke orange. Yeah. And then he puts in this fruit basket earring and I'm like, Dean, don't, please. We're going to this party. I don't want to get killed. And we go into this party. No one knows us. I mean, we know a few people there, all these football players. And Dean comes in, just dancing, swinging his <laughs> hips, doing this with his hands. And the fruit basket earrings going back and forth. And I'm thinking, we're going to get killed. 
you know, the way Dean looks, you know, and that kind of, but again, Dean didn't care. Dean doesn't care what someone thinks about him. He's like, no, I'm going to be me. And anyway, it was just one of those funny moments, <laughs> you know, and uh, Dean was doing some pretty crazy things at that time too, you know, with your roommates, uh, Jesse, I think it was. Yeah, no, it was just kind of one of those times where you're kind of sowing your oats and kind of learning who you are. And um, yeah, no, I was, I was definitely, you know, drinking, dabbling in drugs, drugs a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, for me, um, you know, I knew I would always be okay, uh, and it worked out okay, you yeah. know, but I, I don't recommend that for anybody. Yeah. Uh, but I would say I was just having fun and enjoying my first year of college, and, and I did in my second year of college, and uh, had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pratt, how many times did you ride your bike from Cedar City to St. George oh when we were at gosh. SU? True love. Yeah. That's 50 that miles. That's 50 miles. I mean, I'll it's downhill you. 50 miles, but coming back... Oh, coming back, yeah. That'd be well, you have to preface that by... Uh, you were a little skinnier then. I was a little. <laughs> well, little. You're, you're lucky to be alive. To I be know. Um, well, so, like I said, just to preface that, um, Todd and myself uh, dated um, twins, uh, and they were both in St. George or, or uh, Dixie, and uh, I was in uh, Cedar City with Scotty and... Uh, cross and there was a 57 mile uh, difference <laughs> between Cedar City and St. George and it was uh, a tad Healy <laughs> and uh, I was uh, playing football at the time in pretty good shape so I thought I'll just uh, <laughs> add to the you know regiment and ride my bike and uh, so the first time I did it um, it was it was rough We'll just say uh, it was extremely well, why were you rough. riding your bike? I was uh, riding my bike. Uh, well, to tell you the truth, I don't know. I asked that my, myself that question many times. but So you had a car? I did. I oh. had a car. Um, <laughs> wow. But I rode my bike. I think I was trying to uh, impress uh, <laughs> <The ladies>. somebody. <laughs> and what were you riding, like a 1987 Huffy? Uh, no, I, no, I had, yeah, a, I had a road ten, bike. Ten speed. It was, it was a ten I had speed a road bike, bike but um, if yeah. anyone out there um, has technology. ridden bikes, which, uh, <laughs> you know, some of us are very good at nowadays, but uh, it, it's, it's an extreme sport in that vein anyway i uh i was trying to get also to a softball game that all these mfers were playing and they wanted me to play in so i show up on a bike in and my legs are jello oh, yeah. he couldn't even walk he literally was like, it was anyway uh i only did it about Three times uh, I decided after that that I wasn't such the Iron did Man. Did you ever ride back? I did. I rode back about 22 miles, uh, and then... Because um, back is significantly yeah. uphill. It's all uphill. So, uh, like I said, it was 57 miles. I, I think I almost made it halfway back, and this truck pulled over and said, do you want to ride? <laughs> and I threw the my bike in the back. and uh, You I were on I-15. Uh, yeah, I fifteen with right the with I-15. the semis. Yeah, it's and actually hailing and raining one way. <laughs> so um, if anyone out there, you know, discredits the uh, Iron Man down the in uh, <laughs> yeah an eighteen year old's will to do something. Um, well, there you go. Yeah. A will to chase what? A will to do what? <laughs> it was a will to uh, see my girlfriend at the time. He was whooped. Yeah. Totally was whooped. And, uh, totally whooped. I was, you know, to tell you the truth, it was just to see Todd. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, um, I, that makes me feel good. Yeah, it was, uh, we had a special little thing there. I don't really know if the girls had more to do with it than the fact that we were such good friends that had girlfriends that were twins. I don't know. Yeah. Weird, but... Uh, no, that was an interesting time for sure. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Hey, t- let's let's talk a little bit. I I was the reason I'm bringing this up because I was talking to my father about this just uh, you know a couple months ago. Um, we uh, as a group decided to go to uh, San Diego for our <laughs> um, oh, senior wow. trip. 
And as we walk down this uh, memory lane, um, there's a couple of things about huh. Dean Thompson, uh, Diablo, that uh, are always going to be in my mind. Uh, don't need the roof to the Jeep. Uh, the <laughs> Celica <laughs> that's stuck in Todd's yard and uh, this Jeep that uh, Dean got that um, forever will be ingrained in my memory. <laughs> totally. But uh, us yeah. tandemly going to Saint San Diego uh, with Dean in his Jeep with no top and uh, friends hanging out the back of the Jeep. But anyone want to add from to Salt that? From Salt Lake, though. So you're, you're leaving from Salt Lake. From Salt Lake, yes. straight through. It was our graduation um, trip. Yeah. Yeah, straight through. And Dean's like, hey, it's going to be warm. It's going to be really warm, you know, and... Dean shows up without the top, and we're, and I think all of us were like, "Yeah, it's going to be hot enough. It's fine." Oh, I questioned it. Oh, well, you was did. The one of the questions. <laughs> then twenty minutes in, when Dean wanted to trade cars, I'm like, "Nope, <laughs> that's all you. You made that choice." Now, and that car or that Jeep was rough riding too. It wasn't smooth. Oh, remember <laughs> Zach on the way home through Death Valley? <laughs> He was just like he a scab. <laughs> oh, God. He was yeah. like a scab. And he oh. had to drive like this. Remember that? Yeah, the wheel was, was like... It <laughs> was like, like drifting the whole time. Yeah. And, I, and I just remember Zach on the way back, too. We stopped for gas, and Zach was asking everybody, do you have some mentholatum? <laughs> because his lips were so chapped. <laughs> what yeah. a great trip that was, though. Oh, that trip. Oh. Yeah, senior trip. We all we rented a beach house in San Diego, and it was the biggest piece of junk on the beach, right? You see all Thankfully. these beautiful things, and all of a sudden, like this, <laughs> like you know, what do we call it? Money pit was what it looked like. You know, it was this piece of junk. True. Oh, Zach and Zach showed the bums how to break in, so we had to ground yeah. it from Disneyland. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man, good times. We, yeah, we that again. This is during the partying days. We yeah, we were doing some crazy stuff. You guys were drinking down there. <laughs> Just a little. So you, what I, do you mean, you guys? I wasn't on that trip. Reese and I went to Hawaii, but I know there was a special purchase you made that um, was a great story, <laughs> also. In Tijuana, the necklaces. Oh yeah, Tijuana. Tijuana. Yeah. Tijuana. Yes. Yeah, Todd, we went to Todd. Tijuana on a day. Sly was so excited to get a necklace, silver necklace, and as soon as we get to Tijuana, he just like bails, and the rest of us are in another area, and we're going to get a necklace as well. <laughs> and we buy a necklace, you know, the guy starts at like 30 bucks or whatever it was. And, you know, Dean and I and um, Russell. And anyway, we buy these necklaces and talk the guy down to like 10 bucks. And Sly finds us about 20 minutes later, just <laughs> giddy as all could be because he talked this guy oh from gosh. 80 bucks to 40 bucks. And the next morning, his neck is just solid green. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the only one that yeah. turned green. Yeah, we got in the it's ocean hilarious. that day. And, and <laughs> just like this green dripping stuff off my neck. I'm like, what is this? And I thought it means it's fake. I'm like, what? Yeah, I thought that was a, a nice purchase. It was a good purchase. Yeah, we got half price. Yeah, we got a few other purchases down there, too. Yes, we did. Yes, we yeah. did. I think some steroids were yeah, purchased. The, uh, oh, really? Aspirin oh, yeah. steroids. Purchased yes. those in Tijuana. Is that where Zach had to declare his citizenship? Yeah. And was yes. Very we confused. almost lost He's Zach. He's looking in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know where I put it. Remember that? <laughs> like, yep. yeah. I think it was Dean. Like, hey, no, no. You're, you're, Zach, you're, you're American. <laughs> American. Oh, uh, American. <laughs> Or when Zach would just yeah. pull his money out from the inside, it was just all that in a big, a big wad, wad, and he had to like take it all yeah, apart. Like, mm, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Good times. Yeah, that was crazy. Fun trip. Yeah, those steroids. Hey, how about off. Pratt in the uh, bar down there in Tijuana when he was dancing with the? Oh uh, yeah. The, she was a little rough. The meth addicts. <laughs> she was a they little. They were rough. totally. They were <laughs> rough. Hey, I did that to save all you guys. Well, remember the guy with one arm was like, "Hey guys, over here." <laughs> Remember that? That scared the pants the off me. To those sell people. His oh yeah, and remember Devin's just like, "Hey, let's go in there. <laughs> it's all good." Yeah. yeah, that was good times, man. That that was a crazy <clears throat> trip. Uh, we did some crazy things. We we did something at Disneyland you're not supposed to do, but we won't. I don't know if we need to men uh, can mention that on here, but we did some fun things. <laughs> that was yes, fun. Yes, we did. I've trip. never heard of the Disneyland portion of your adventure, so. Oh, it's the Sky Ride. The Sky Ride. <laughs> oh, the good old Sky Ride. We got ride. high on the Sky Ride. Yep. Really? Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, See, now that's something I would do. Yep. I told my uh, kids for a lot of years that I went skydiving, and it was just really that. We went on the Sky Ride right. high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
did yeah, some crazy things back in the day, didn't we? We did, but the beauty of this group is that we have so much shared life together that goes beyond even yeah. high school. We've continued to keep our lives very close. And I mean, Tove and I have raised our sons together. Uh, yeah. We were single parents for a long time. I mean, I yeah. still send Drew a happy Mother's Day because the man <laughs> rocked does. it as a mother and a father. I do. I send him yeah. happy Mother's Day every year because, That's awesome. um, you know, <laughs> you guys are what helped me get my kids through college and become successful in their own rights. Is, and I want to thank you because the shared life has meant a lot to me, this brotherhood that we have and some of the crazy stuff. I mean, Dean, should we talk about you and I in Vegas that night at the But real quick, you, you uh, to- <laughs> real quick, Toby did a Christmas card with, I think it was you and your boys and Forbes's dog. Yep. Yes. Right, remember that? Uh, yep. That mm-hmm. was that was a classic. Merry Christmas from the Tovies yeah, and the from, Forbes dogs. And then the Forbes, Forbes dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that was a classic. That was Tucker and Snoop, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, okay. Tucker and Rocco. Tucker and Rocco. Rocco. That was, yeah. okay, yeah. pre-Snoop. Wow, that goes Sorry. way back then. Back yeah. to what was the question? That was your last Christmas card? That was my last and only Christmas card. Yeah, well, really? maybe I'll bring that I back. You, didn't you should. Nah, I've only done the one. You can use Sophie. Sophie's very. <laughs> that was cute. a drop Sophie's the awesome. mic type I think of this card, though. Year, you, should you know what? This year I'll do, do one. You got my word on that. Good. Oh, you heard yeah. it here first. Folks. I'll do it. Be Toby and the new Forbes dogs. Yeah. I yeah. Was gonna say you got it's a new, whole new generation. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. well, Dean doesn't want to talk about that. Toby, let's talk about you when you and I worked together at Getner. There's a great story there. I'm willing to. You leave it to me. Um, it, well, it's more funny the way you tell it because. Oh my heavens! Let's so, back at we worked. Tove and I worked together. This was 2000, 2001 ish. Yeah, something right in there. Um, it was right before I did what I'm doing now. But um, we were working for a company that sold conference calling uh, before oh, that was a, right. when that was a necessary thing. And uh, oh, I was the we absolute were, shit. Well, I, yeah, I was I was having some success at it, and it was all based on call numbers, and um, it was outgoing. Oh, it was a call center kind of a thing, and we learned that. Well, Drew learned that. So go ahead, I'll let you tell him what you learned. Well, as I said, I was terrible at it, but <laughs> uh, so on the daily, because you know you just had to put calls out. So I figured it would be God if I can't lead in sales, I'm going to lead in calls. So I started calling fax numbers. And it would record as soon as it picked up that it was a phone call. And every morning it'd be like, Drew Toby led the team in calls. <laughs> anyway, oh, we're. Uh, uh, well, so Scott let me take. Th- yeah, let me jump in and then you okay. can tell the story. Um, so one of their new products at the time was web conferencing. And um, we were trying to get customers to, to get on and do web conferencing, which is like Zoom now. I mean, it was. This was in the early stages. So I set up a view or a, a test or a um, <laughs> yes, demonstration about, right? demonstration with my uncle who at the time worked for a large bank corp based out of Salt Lake City and uh, so I get him on we have a, a guide from the company we work for uh, myself as a salesperson my uncle and uh, he brings on another person from his company a woman um, to go through this web conferencing demo well Drew wanted to see it so I have him come on underneath so nobody knows he's there. He's just logged in. And the proximity of this office is that Drew and I are literally on other sides of a little partition. Cubicle wall. Cubicle yeah. wall. So I could like stand up and talk to him. Um, we also use this internal communication chat system, instant message system that the company had that we would communicate a lot with if we couldn't talk to each other directly. So... That was, but we had a lot of ways to communicate. So Drew, go ahead. You're on the thing, and we're having the deal. And yeah, we're kind of waiting for Scott's <laughs> uncle to get on, and Scott's doing this personal messaging to me because there's this girl that works at our office <laughs> oh, no. that. But I'm using the the, the company's yeah, one. The company's messaging, and there's this girl that works in the office that Scott's trying to get me to ask out, and right. she was cute. And uh, anyway, Scott's personal messaging me through the message site. Uh, <clears throat> telling me, you know, there's, you know, well, it was, some of it was graphic. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm just like, dude, I'm good. I don't want to date her. I'm not going to, you know, yada, yada. And anyway, so Scott's uncle is now coming on with his team. Some of it was graphic. On to the uh, conference call. So we've shifted over from. So it shifts over from that, from our now personal it's, messaging. Now it's, it's on business. the web yeah. and it's on this demonstration. And I, can't remember exactly what I said in the last message I sent to Scott, but it was just like, no, dude, I, I am good. I'm not going to ask her out. 
I'm like, what are you trying to do? And so then this message comes across on the, the conferencing conference. messenger that says, dude, I'm just trying to get you laid. <laughs> by a little blonde hottie. Yeah, by a little blonde hottie. <laughs> and then Scott's uncle now is Whoa. activated on this thing and right across the front page <laughs> of the, everybody's computer it is this all. message oh, from Scott wow. saying, I'm just trying to get you laid by a blonde hottie. <laughs> Man. Scott's uncle is like, Scott, what is this smut on the screen? Well, and of course, before that even happened, as soon as Scott sent the message, he just pops over the, the divider. He's like, did that just go to everybody? And I just looked up and started laughing. And I said, yep. Oh, man. And then his uncle's like, Scott, what is this smut oh, on the screen? Wow. Scott's like, that wasn't meant for you. He's like, well, we're done here. And I can just hear, you know, keys getting pushed. Scott's trying to delete, delete, delete. 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 And his uncle hangs up, takes his team off. And in within Gettner, we have, you know, there's, I can't remember her name. That was Shelly. Shelly is at the controls of everything on this thing. And Scott just, you know, grabs me. And he's like, you got to come with me. You got to come with me to explain this. And we walk into Shelly's office and she is already just in hysterics. Yeah, just laughing. And she's like, Scott, that's not the first time this has happened. So, yeah. and, she squelched oh. it. it. Yeah, because I thought I was going to get fired for sure. I mean, oh, yeah. I oh, thought my hilarious. uncle would. How long? Because my uncle was my mentor. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. this is somebody who I have the utmost respect for. And to this day, we laugh about this now. But I'm glad uh, you bring it up, though. That's, that's now. hilarious. Yeah. But, that is I hilarious. Mean, so, yeah, we've just, again, that's part of the shared life, this yeah. brotherhood that we've had, that we've gone through. Oh, Do you know? Yeah. 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 I remember one time my parents came home. Uh, Dean was there in my house by himself cooking <laughs> pancakes and he's in the kitchen just flipping pancakes and here comes my mom home early from work <laughs> hey what are you doing I think Todd's on his way I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure where he's at but uh, he's on his way yeah. and uh, anyway there's just funny moments like that. that again Dean just being Dean you know good times um, I'll add to this the uh, kind of the the message I think the theme a little bit we all have uh have done some crazy stuff but we were fortunate to have each other to actually look out for each other uh to sure. lean on i remember Absolutely. throughout i since we were 12 11 12 we were always you know i remember when scotty was having problems everyone rallies to scotty and when dean's having problems you know nobody rallies to him because he didn't <laughs> care no but you know i remember getting a call uh from everybody saying todd's out of control and uh we ha held our butts down to mm -hmm. uh dixie that. and yeah. i pulled him out of a party and <laughs> i almost punched him and said what are you doing and he looked at me like i don't know what you're talking about but i think in you know all of us uh have i think everybody in life has their ups and downs their you know experimenting through what dean calls trying to figure out what he wants to do but we had each other uh and i think if yeah. if the theme of this is uh we're here because we've had each other. If we didn't, yeah. I don't know where we would be For in sure. reality. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and it really takes a village. So I mean, you know, we all support each other, but you know, we had really good parents for the most part too that yeah. would help any of us out. And you yeah. know, we could go to any house, you know, and share most experiences and uh, get advice or feedback or get a little direction. And so we had a lot of fun, but there were always people there to help us kind of become who we are today. Yeah. yeah. Well, my parents would, would all consider all of you their kids. I mean, all of you. Seriously, like to this day, like honestly, like my dad is like, he just feels like he's part of the friend group. He just loves you guys. And it's just cool to watch that, that we've had that, just that connect, connectedness, which a lot of people don't get. And it's unfortunate. And but man, we have a group of friends and there's more friends than just us, but um, we're so tight and it's awesome to, to have that support, like you're saying. Very fortunate. I My siblings comment on it all the time. Yeah. Because they don't have that with yep. friends from, you know. Oh, yeah. Some of us go back to kindergarten <clears throat> together and, you know, in grade school and YBA basketball and, you know, and here we are 
you know, 40 plus years later. Yeah. And Some of us still playing softball together. Softball together, fantasy football together, you know, <clears throat> uh, holiday lunches, dinners, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Football games. And it's mean, phenomenal. Yeah, it is phenomenal. Well, I, I want to say something. So, you know, <clears throat> I years ago pulled myself away from the friend group just because I was a mess. Um, many of you don't know, like I didn't share like, hey, I'm a mess, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but it was going through a tough time. Um, and had something that happened that kind of changed the course of my life. And uh, and, and it really was a, a time in my life when I was really struggling. You know, back then, I, I think we all did it. We put on a mask that everything's good, you know, and I was, but, but behind the scenes, I was really, really struggling. And, uh, but you guys, I just want to thank you for, even though I did that, you guys respected what I did. You guys supported it. I mean, some of you gave me a hard, Dean gave me kind of a hard time on it. Um, but uh, he did. He, uh, just being honest. Yeah. But but it wasn't in, in a. It's or just jabs. Dean being yeah. Dean. Just some. He just yeah. I, you know. But that's Dean, and I and I love Dean for that. But uh, but this was twenty early late teens. Well, yeah, this was twenty two. I was twenty two. Yeah. Twenty two years. I mean, we're fifty three, well, fifty four. Make change. You yeah. got to separate. Tove's fifty five. Well, I just 54. knew that. I I had to. I'm, the last time I drank was at Pratt's birthday party when your girlfriend threw a big rager and i thought oh i stole her bottle opener remember that yes. still and, and i'm not kidding you i go still to that have, party oh my gosh. and i'm the thinking fuck. i'm gonna stay yeah. 10 minutes he's my best friend mm-hmm. kind of you know I'm, I'm gonna go show support i you know i'm not gonna drink <laughs> and i'm i end up drinking a case of beer that night <laughs> yeah. and i just get hammered and uh and it was it wasn't because i couldn't didn't want to be with you guys it was just more of i knew if i was going to try to get past this that i had to separate Separate, and Mm -hmm. but i just want you guys to know i know that you guys respected that you guys we've been friends you guys have been very supportive you know that kind of thing i just i don't know if i've ever told you to your faces but that meant a lot to me i did some things i wasn't happy about and uh anyway grateful for you guys todd you never you never really separated dude well i know that but i mean i didn't go step you guys I, didn't, I took yeah. a step back you yeah know. you were always i, with I just us, had man. to and i know that but it was hard i'm going to be totally honest with you. harder than stopping drinking and partying was stepping away from sure. you guys that was brutal i was watching blockbuster movies with my mom on a friday night and i'm just going this is my life <laughs> yeah it was, it was brutal but but it's something i had to do and i'm glad i did it um but I'm just grateful for you guys for sticking with me and not giving up on me and, and letting me still be a part of everything that you guys do. And, no, absolutely, and buddy. I love you, brother. Out. Yeah. And every time, I don't know, just it, it feels like we're we're back with me and you and Steve Brownlee, and I don't remember what class we had together. but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, yeah. That, that bond, that kinship is just, yeah. is just there. So it, time separation I don't think is yeah. has taken a toll, which is awesome because, yeah. you know, I'm – I don't know. You guys are amazing men. This is an amazing group of men. And I, well, I know shows we're sitting how here. deep the friendship is. Yeah. We can take a step back or we go through different things and we're just, we're still uh, As there. soon as you're back together, you're right back to where you were. Yeah. You know, and that's how it is. And that's how, yeah. we, you know, with a lot of people, you know, I don't see Zach Jones as much yeah. for the last several years as I used to. And, but when I do, it's like, it's, we're right, it's like, right back like where we were. Like you never missed a day. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of examples of that. You know, unfortunately, Chris Kimball's no longer with us. Um, you know, yeah. but the same thing with Chris, you know, I'd go a while without seeing him and then we, it would just pick up right where we were. Yeah. So um, we've lost a few friends, Chris Kimball, Mark yeah. Shank, yeah. you know, Dave, Dave Brogue. Brogue. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, but yeah, we've, yeah. we've lost some good ones, man. It's yes, been we tough have. to watch, uh, to go through all that. Yeah. And I, I, I'm glad you brought up Chris cause I didn't want to talk about that cause that's, um, a fresh, very fresh, very fresh. Um, yeah. we lost Chris, Chris took his own life. Um, six weeks ago, six weeks ago. And, and wow. he was, he was older than us by a year, but he was part of this group. I coached football with Chris for a long, long time. And, um, I don't know how to process that part yet. I do want to say suicide prevention, 800-273-8255. Thank you. Um, Katie Babs talks about that every day on turbo yeah. on XM that I listen to at the gym. So 800-273-8255. If you're ever in trouble, um, I know that there's Thanks, people that Scooter. can help, but, um, how are you feeling about that? How are you guys processing that? Uh, I'm still processing Chris. You know, uh, Chris took his life two days after my father died, and I kind of had to compartmentalize 
that for a while, and I, I think I've still kind of compartmentalized it. Um, I'm still as angry as I am sad, I think, yeah. but I do hope Chris has found peace. I know he fought demons for a long time. Um, I've never been in that headspace to that level, so I don't understand yeah. it. Yeah. And, um, you know, but, but I guess if I'm going to be honest with you, I, I still, I still am as angry as I am sad. I love Chris, um, with all my heart. Um, he was one of the most likable guys there ever was. And I think his dad, from what I understand, I wasn't able to attend his service, but from what I understand, you know, his dad just said, uh, you know, Chris loved everybody and everybody loved Chris, yeah. but Chris didn't love himself enough to beat the demons that he was fighting. And, uh, I, you know, that really hit home with me as far as a definition of Chris. Yeah. Because it's very true. You know, there wasn't a more likable guy than Chris. Sure. You know, he'd yeah. come up to you with that smile, <laughs> yeah. his attitude, his, you know, yeah. just a, a likable, lovable guy. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, to go through the loss of my father and Chris in the first couple of days, you know, it was like an example of like the full circle of life that I saw with my dad. And then a really, you know, a really sad ending to uh, an incredible person. And, uh, yeah. you know, I'm going to miss Chris, you know, a lot. Uh, I do already. Um, but I'm still in the process of processing that whole thing with Chris right now. I yeah. haven't really found peace with it. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not, you know, distraught about it either. Because another thing, you know, that Chris's dad said uh, at his service was that, you know, he was shocked that Chris did what he did, but he wasn't surprised. Yeah. And, you know, that's another thing that rings very true. Because, again, you know, Chris fought those demons for a long time. And, um, you know, I didn't catch that phone number you mentioned. But, again, there is that phone number to call. if you 800-273-8255. Thanks, Scott. Got it. Yeah. You know, thinking about Chris, uh, I had to stop and reflect on who else we know might be having problems. In fact, I had a little conversation with Dean about, you know, I, it just made me think, you know, we're here for each other. Are we missing something? You know, is somebody out there hurting that we're not doing our job you know well you know that's interesting because i've thought about that with chris a lot and you know the day before chris took his life i called him five times and he never answered and then i uh you know shot him a text sunday evening and let him know that my father had passed and mm. wanted to let him know and i wanted to chris to let his father know because yeah. chris's dad and my dad were very close and um about an hour later chris texted me back but all it said was sorry drew Mm. And I'm not sure if that was sorry that my dad passed oh. or if he was sorry about what he was about to do. Wow. And, you know, as you think about us doing our jobs or reaching out to people and that kind of thing, you know, I do believe that, and Chris is a good example of that, I did reach out. He didn't come back. And I think it's because he knew yeah. that if he shared what he was going through with me, I might pull him from the edge as I've done before. Yeah. Um, and I just don't think, Chris wanted to be pulled back from the edge of for wherever he was in, you know, yeah. in well, it sounds like space. he had a plan the way, I mean, the way things went down. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I that think sounds so. like he had a plan. You know, I've not had a chance to, I talked to Andrea Kimball, um, last Sunday I ran into her at brunch and I talked to her and her husband a little bit about it and they're hurting obviously. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, the hell they're, they're still really fresh off of the loss of Russ Kimball, you yeah. know, which yeah. was only right. five years ago. Yeah. Wasn't too long um, ago. And, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a shame that uh, Chris is gone. Uh, very likable guy, lovable guy, um, a really good friend. And, uh, but I do think that, you know, it's tough when someone gets into that spot to be able to help because they, I think they get to a spot where they just don't want the help and yeah. want to go through with close what off. their plan well, is. Yeah. Pratt, you were talking about when you were there for me, um, and I think you were referring to when we were in McPhail's backyard. Um, a couple of years ago, um, I went through um, a migraine challenge, and it was it would hit me seasonally, but it was brutal. It would be multiple weeks of just sheer agony and hospital visits and hospital visits. And uh, I got dark, and I started saying some things like, you know, I was, you know, if this isn't gone in a week, I'm gonna take care of this myself. And mm. I said it to enough people apparently that it got overheard, and um, these guys rallied and gathered around me and, and they got together and pulled me in and, and asked those questions of, are you serious? And how serious are you? And yeah. were you, and I would say I was pretty serious at the moment 
because I was in dire straits. Um, it took me another year of, um, I guess, not really paying attention <clears throat> to what was causing it. And uh, I figured that out. And I haven't had those headaches now for a long time, going on 10 months. And um, That's great. Also, stopped drinking alcohol 10 months ago. So that, I think, is a big contributor. So That's awesome. Um, but, yeah, yeah. With these I, I don't know where I'd have got without these guys. And, mm-hmm. I mean, Dean can attest to it because he saw me at the worst of it. He saw me uh, going through physical pain that was unstoppable. And, you know, so there are factors that can push people to those things. And um, I'm yeah. just glad all you guys were there and that we've all been able to – or that you were able to help me – work through and get through and get past some of those demons. So thank you guys. I appreciate that um, every no, day. You're welcome. And uh, you know, awesome. the thing is too, though, it goes full circle because I mean, I can tell you Absolutely. a month ago when I lost my father and then Chris passed and I'd had a little incident a few months prior to that. And I had some friends that were worried about me and I mean, I could grab my phone right now and go through text messages from Scott Forbes, Todd Sylvester, Dean Thompson, Pratt. Um, I could go on. Uh, but my friend group uh, reached out to me on a daily basis. And that friend group is eight, ten people that on a daily basis I got a text or a phone call asking how I was doing and if I needed anything. And again, that support and that love yeah. that's shown is so important. It really, really is. And this group has always done it. Yeah. We, it's awesome. Slay, you helped me in that same time um, when you were still um, – I guess more active in a religious fashion um, and laid hands on me and, and that did provide a lot of help and, and I thank you for that and that was more the reach out just the one to one time because yeah. I was going through a rough time then and you know it took me a few times to figure out what pathway works for me and what doesn't yeah. and that day you spent and the time you took I do appreciate it because Absolutely. you know and we've always been there you've always been there and I don't know, to see the transition and, and watch what you've done and turn this whole thing into is pretty spectacular. So um, thank you. I'm proud of this group of men. Very proud. Same here. Absolutely. You know, and I just say, Todd, you know, uh, I've always been in your court and I've always been impressed with what you've done with your life and, you know, raising your family to, you know, transitioning into, uh, you know, life coaching and to what you're doing now. And, you know, I look at what you do and I think it's very valuable to everybody. And I'm just, um, and I have been for a long time, really impressed with you and what you do and uh, just want you to continue doing it because it's good to see people doing good out there. Yeah, wow, that means a lot. Thank you, Dean. Love you, man. Love you too. Yeah, I, you know, Again, we could come up with a thousand stories of these type of situations. You know, when I was in one of my darkest moments, uh, Dean, you were there. And um, I had reached out to, you know, I was struggling with my, I was going kind of going through a faith crisis. And uh, first time people, me saying this. So, um, but I remember I reached out to people that I thought would respond in a certain way because they had a background and whatever. And it was just met with, uh, you know, I'm doing the wrong thing. It's my fault. Da, 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 da. And then I, out of all the friends, I went to Dean first and told him. And all he did was cry and come and hug me. <clears throat> I'll never forget that. And I, I sent you a text a little while ago about that. But I'll never forget that because it was like for, the, for one moment, Dean didn't care. He didn't ask questions. He just hugged me and cried with me. And uh, that meant a lot. <clears throat> And uh, so anyway, I mean, we just have so many great moments like that where we've been. I always say this in treatment here with people. You've got to have friends who have your back. Yep. Because if you don't have that, because a lot of these people who come through this treatment center, they don't have those type of friends. It's like, mm. you know, and yeah, we did some crazy things together and people might look at that and go, yeah, you guys. But you know what? No, we we've been through the thick and thin with each other. But we have each other's backs. Absolutely. And that is rare. And I always tell people who leave this program, you've got to have friends who have your back, who will call you out, who will say, what are you doing? What's your problem? You're better than this. Or, hey, you look like you're struggling. What can I do for you, man? And be honest with me, that kind of stuff. So, again, just, you know, echoing everything that you guys are all saying. It's just amazing. I am my brother's keeper is something that's always resonated with me. And 
you know i think that's that's part of it is that if if we're stronger together and building each other up is um just something that seems to come with this group and i love it i mean we give each other plenty of shit but (laughs) (laughs) it's all in love though it's all in love but yeah yeah i i think you know we've seen each other at our worst and we've seen each other at our best and uh yeah i you know when it's real you you don't judge where someone's at you either help or cheer on or yeah accept because you know that's what we do well you guys accepted a lot of crazy women in my history that you've had to put up with and but i mean you helped me through it right i mean you know yeah hey some Scott, of them you were like you guys are you really are you really after after a while when you call all 10 women crazy you may want to <laughs> look at yourself i'm just saying well there is a common denominator i know right? fortunately yeah, hey, Forbes, but see, uh, take but a just, look at yourself here right but <laughs> Caveat, Stacy, my wife, He's like, Why is, she oh, broke yeah. that mold. Uh, Are we all in agreement Stacey. with that? She did. You stayed broke on the, the hunt until you found the right one. I did find the right one. one. Yes, hey, I found sure. an amazing, amazing woman. But it's a lesson in perseverance. It was. I mean, seriously. Right. No. And yeah, I, I shook the crazy tree a lot. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, you know, I was thinking, I mean, there's so much we could sit here and talk about, but, uh, um, you know, Pratt, I've known Pratt since, I mean, elementary school we played on the yba teams together we played actually against dean yeah and dean was the dude that was just dominating everybody you know um but i was always pratt and i were always on the same yba basketball team and we'd have sleepovers um you know we uh we would walk back and forth to our houses and get chased by that dog uh (laughs) every time just these fun moments in you know, it was before cell phones and it was before, yes. like you could leave the house Security. for hours. Your parents don't have a clue where you're at, yeah. you know, but it was just the way we did things. And, days. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, just looking up to you guys and hanging out with you guys in high school and just, I don't know, there's just, it's a blessing, man. I, I wouldn't change a thing of what we all went through and what we did in high school. I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. It was the greatest. Would you change thing. getting put in the garbage can, Dean? <laughs> no, <laughs> but it was embarrassing. <laughs> what? Dude, tell us that. What? I, I don't remember that. What? That? We were messing around the hallway at lunch up at Brighton. You remember where the, where the candy machines were, and then yeah. it went to that ramp. Yeah, the ramp down. And yeah. Dean was already Slope hallway. Dean was already on Miss Gill's shit list for everything. The hot Ms. dog. Gil, the, oh, the, oh, oh, yeah. The joke. The, the, the snowball. The snowball. Just one more. Everything. <laughs> I need to work on my jeep. <laughs> so at one point during oh, lunch, oh my gosh. Um, I, Ed McDaniel, Rich Saunders, myself, and Pratt was there. Were you there, Scott? Uh-huh. Coons was there, I think. At Coons. Yeah. Um, and I don't know exactly whose idea it was, but Dean gets picked up and put into this metal garbage can <laughs> with his arms down in it. Oh, and wow. then we creased the top of the garbage can <laughs> together so Dean is completely stuck. I don't remember that. And then about four of us take him all the way down that hallway just running launch him. and launch him down the ramp. So Dean's flying down the ramp oh, my gosh. like this. And he, as he hits the bottom, oh. the garbage can just tilts and he falls sideways and cannot move right at miss gill's feet at the oh, entrance of the wow. lunchroom and dean is squirming down <laughs> there like a fish trying to get, out, trying to get out around him, right? yes and, and miss gill gets on dean like it's his fault and of course dean's like yeah miss gill i put myself in this can yeah clenched, clenched it together, it together. Yeah. so i'm stuck <laughs> Anyway, and of course, we all took off as soon as we saw him fall by Miss Gill. <laughs> oh, and yeah. And Dean gets, uh, <laughs> Dean had to stay after school for a week and clean lockers. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Dean well, might have something to say about it. I think it. the problem is, yeah, no, I had to clean, trouble. I had to clean windows and lockers, but I never told on one of you guys. <laughs> no, nope, that's right. Never told on one that's of you. Right. I just he, did it. This guy had your back. Took yeah, the punishment. He had our back. Your yeah, friend yeah. has your back. See? Well, I remember we were throwing snowballs right outside our locker uh, on Bengal Boulevard there, just pegging cars and we get busted here comes miss gill you know you know you know get down to my office and he goes one more <laughs> wham just nails his car and right in front of him, we're like oh my it was goodness the bus or was it, it the bus yeah, maybe it was, it was a bus but yeah and well just, she came running out because she was like that's it you guys are all yeah. suspended dean's like well in that case well yeah. if we're already done here <laughs> one, one more, more. Wham. and i'm looking at dean going oh my gosh 
<laughs> you know, and I just remember being in the, in the office, and one by one, everybody was kind of talking, and they gave their story, and then they got to go back to class. And yeah. at the end of it, I took the heat for everybody and got a week away from school to work on my silica. Yeah, well, you got to work on your silica. You're like, I don't care. I, I need the time off anyway to work on my car. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, just uh, yeah, just so many stories that we could go into, you know, um, playing ping pong at Dean's and doing yeah. – Bach, remember we used to oh, box. Oh God! Remember we used to Mumford fight and, and Bob McLeish. Oh, when yeah. Bob drilled Mumford and he just took his ball and ran home. Yep. Just, oh, well, well, Lord, remember it's like, funny. are we going to punch in the face? And those two were like, and Bob's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, a couple cracks and Bob just wham, just <laughs> old, square. Old was bicep that Bob. Zach's <laughs> house? Because I know we used to box Dean's basement. basement. That was a Dean's, Dean's basement. basement. Zach's was, and he threw his gloves. Zach's off was and walked crazy home boxing yep. from Dean's house, which is a oh, long, yeah, long way, long way, long way, long ways away. Eric did. Uh, that's the longest yeah, Mumford's that's... ever walked in his life. I guarantee you. And you know, oh. speaking of the Jones, their boxing matches because when I lived with them, yeah, Frank oh, yeah, had put together was... tournaments, <laughs> and they would draw, you know, yeah. And so it was either you know I would either drew Frank, Justin, or Zach, oh. you know, and I'm two a third their size. I did beat Justin once, made it to the finals against Frank, and we you know we wore ha- football helmets. helmets, yeah. Oh, and Suzanne would be out there. She'd have lemonade and some crackers <laughs> and yeah. things. And we're just on their back patio having these boxing matches. And Frank put me into the middle of next week. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, oh, I mean, yeah. The guy was a yeah. Wally solid was sitting on his rock. Harley. Huh? Yeah. No, it was yeah. good times, though. Yeah. Good times there at the Jones house. I remember the basement. Guys. It was you couldn't hit in the face. Uh, it was just body where, punching. That's where we brought the well, I, I boxed, then, Yeah, I boxed yeah. Brandon Hansen. Yeah. yeah. yeah who's huge and I'm yeah. the skinny little kid and you gave him we, a sucker we walk punch. out there to touch gloves and I thought my this is my only chance to get a shot in so you, and I just <laughs> crack him in the chin and it takes his chin strap off so he throws the helmet off and says let's go and I thought oh no oh, yeah and he Game just on. wails on me for like five minutes and I can't see the the punches yeah. coming because you're in a helmet and my head's just going swack, swack, <laughs> you know. Oh, oh man, it was crazy. Well, I'll tell you, you know, now that you talk about these boxing matches we had, it has to, you know, like my thoughts go towards the black eye fights. <laughs> yes, we had. black eye fights. Black Which is eye another fights. crazy thing. Oh god, yeah, don't so that was at your, that. that Hunter's Woods place. I we remember did we Hunter's did it there. And, uh, you were at that one at yeah, the Hunter's yeah, Woods. Yeah. In fact, oh, I yeah. uh, wasn't I Shank there too. Yeah, Shank, Shank was Shank there. Drew Rasmussen. Was it? Was Cameron Peterson one of those? Shank. He was. Well, and I drew Cameron. Yep. And that's Cameron took a shot. Hit him in the top yes. of the eye and it and split, split his, his eye open. open. Remember, I, I had <laughs> Will Stead and everyone's like, ready? Yeah. We're like, dude. <laughs> and I just <laughs> unload. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, we did some uh, crazy that stuff. That was some man. dumb stuff. Well, um, I think maybe to kind of wrap this, bring this full circle, is maybe I can go around the room, starting with you, Scott. Just, you know, for those who are listening, obviously they're listening to our childhood, but there's a lot of great lessons. Maybe share just one thing that someone's listening right now that may be struggling or looking for a, a pick-me-up, that kind of thing. What would you tell them? Um, <clears throat> I guess I heard something. There was a show, that Anna Delby show, um, that was on Netflix, yeah. or one of those, and there's a character in it that, that gets stung by her, and... Um, she makes a comment that I loved and it was about being angry. And I guess if somebody's struggling, anger is usually a part of that struggle. Yeah. And what I'd like to say is that what, what I, what I heard in this thing was, or what she said was something to the effect of if you're angry, all you are is a character in someone else's story. And that really, really kind of stuck with me. Wow. Yeah. I like that view of it Mm -hmm. because that helps me a lot. So I've, I've been trying to put that into practice a lot and, just be focused on conscious of, wait a minute, am I now a character in someone else's story mm. or am I living my own truth? Yeah, so I love that. That's what I'd like to impart. It okay. wasn't my own line, but it stuck with me. No, I love that. Tove? Tove. What's the subject again? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you guys, sorry. Wisdom. I knew this was going to happen. Three minutes in wisdom. Spanish. I feel like we're Go. back in Spanish class uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> What's your words of wisdom? Pratt and I got a deep. We, hey, r- we got to share this real fast. <laughs> I'm in Spanish class with Pratt in, you know, it was our junior year or sophomore year. It was our sophomore, sophomore year. Sophomore year. And I, I, I hate getting in front of people and talking, let alone in Spanish. Okay. I'm not doing good in school, you know, and Pratt and I, 
we get teamed up to we have to do a, a speech in front of the class in Spanish for five minutes. Ugh. And so we get yeah. together and we have this. You want to you want to take it from here? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was great because uh, and we actually would practice <laughs> between classes before we got to this class. And and we didn't know Spanish. I mean, we've been through yeah. this class. We're almost done with this yeah, class. class. I think it was the stolen. end of the and we had no idea any Spanish. So Todd's like, what are we going to do? And I'm like, just just say hello to and then say names, right? Well, no, you were going to say, hey, let, we're going to throw a party. Who would you oh, like to that's invite? Right, that's right. <laughs> so I was going to list off 100 Spanish <laughs> names. And it was going to be the five whole minutes, five and minutes. And I, thought, <laughs> and I go, that's brilliant. I'll just list off all, we'll invite Hola, one and one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rosette, you know, And we're going to go down this list. And Pratt's like, that's awesome. And he goes, and then Pratt will come in and end and close it all up. Yeah. So yeah, and so I say the first line, and Todd looks at me <laughs> in this scared look and says like one name, <laughs> and we sat there. And Pratt's looking at me like, well, "Keep I'm going, like, I'm like, keep I going." Froze. I totally froze. I'm scared to death. I'm you didn't have a list froze. you're reading or anything? No, we couldn't. You had to have it memorized. Yeah, we couldn't. We had to just go up and talk. You know, and that was free. That, yeah. That was the sum of our. Uh, yeah. That was great. Got a D minus, we got a D minus. Yeah. We were pretty happy yeah. about it, actually. We, we're like, thank you for passing us. Yeah, you passed. Yeah. Right? Pretty D's much. get degrees. Pretty. So anyway, like, it, just some, uh, some advice, Drew, that you could share with those that are listening that, uh, I mean, we've all been through a lot. And yeah. What could you share? You know, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is just to, you know, again, I'm going to go back to, um, I, I go back to, you know, the loss of my dad here recently. And, um uh, you know, as you guys know, I grew up in a a step situation yeah. that, you know, years ago, it wasn't it wasn't easy. It was really tough. Um, but in my early twenties, um, I would kind of faced with having a relationship with my dad or not. And some of my siblings have not had relationship with my dad for many years. And um, you know, I went and talked with my dad and his wife at the time and put everything out on the table. And I, I just kind of erased everything and went from this day forward. And I went with this day forward with the attitude of just trying to do right by others. Mm. Um, so that's the first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, uh, don't get taken advantage of, but try to do right by others. And uh, yeah. I think you find a lot of peace in that. It's, it's helped me a lot. Yeah, very well said. Love that. Pratt? You know, I, I've had, I have, I think I, I have 13 year old daughters that are twins. So, um, <laughs> I'm fortunate enough to have the older side and then the younger side. So yeah. I have to, um, endure and <laughs> love, uh, every aspect of what that, that is. But what I've, what I've seen lately, um, is that, you know, we've got the war in Ukraine, we've got COVID, we've got so many things. We have social media, we have isolation, we have so many things that uh, we were not faced with as kids. Yeah. And um, so, you know, to kind of, kind of circle this around, we, we are fortunate. We are so fortunate to have grown up the way we did. But I impart this to my kids all the time, and I hope they get it. But I think we as individuals or, or people, we, we make more out of things than they are. Mm. Um, and I would, my advice would be, it's not as bad as you think it is. Uh, be thankful for what you have, the people in your life, really live with gratitude because it can go down a rabbit hole if you don't. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I see people doing it all the time, you know, and you have to stop, you have to reflect and say, wow, you know what? I am getting so mad. Like we talked about your dad, I'm getting so frustrated. I'm the world is ending. The interest rates are going up. Just relax and look about what you have in your circle it's not as bad as you think uh and hopefully you know that gets you to the next day and yeah. 
and and lean on your friends, your true friends. Yeah. Sometimes we don't reach out, and then we expect them to reach out. And you know, there's there's got to be a little bit of both, right? Yeah, I love that. So anyway, well said, Pratt. Dino. Well, uh, I guess I would just want to say, you know, it's been fun doing this with you guys, and uh, you're the reason I'm here and wanting to do this is just to share mm -hmm. this experience with you guys again, something else that we've done together. Yeah. And uh, I'm, gr I'm glad we did it. Uh, for me, uh, you know, I think we've all had our highs and our lows, uh, but what I've learned is uh, it's okay to be vulnerable yeah. and to reach out to people <clears throat> and to need help and to not try to fight through something yourself. And it's actually more courageous to reach out and ask for help than to not. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Again, very well said. You know, um, in treatment, we'll, we, we talk about vulnerability a lot. And we always say the amount of vulnerability you're willing to express will be equal to the happiness you'll experience in life. So if vulnerability is down, happiness is down. Vulnerability up, happiness is up. Because think about it. We've been pretty vulnerable with each other. And it's, it connects us. Like we feel connected when you're vulnerable. Like you, you, you do certain things and you just feel more connected. So I think that's been maybe the foundation of our friendship sure, is yeah, vulnerability. Yeah. At the end of the day, right? We we share everything with I, each other. I think that's. I think you're right. So I very well said, big, Dino. I'm yeah. glad you brought that up. Yeah. I just want to say, love you guys, each and every one of you. I I have yeah. a deep love for all of you guys. Um, I wouldn't be here without you, and uh, I I am thankful and I look forward to. Um, you know what the next decades bring for our friendship. This is pretty awesome. I hope to stay close with you guys for the next yeah. thirty years or more. And when hopefully. you're saying friends, we're saying here, but we also have a lot of friends who aren't in this room. Yes, who we, just didn't, we didn't have enough mics. Yeah, uh, but there's a long list, and you guys know who you are because you know, like you mentioned, all those texts you got when your dad passed, yeah. and just checking in with you. And yeah, I mean, how cool is that? Feels you know, just knowing yeah. that. Even though this sucks, man, I've got people that, you know, want to know how I'm doing. So yeah. meant a lot, yeah. meant a lot. And uh, I'd like to just reiterate what Scott said, too, and let each of you guys know how much I love you, how much I appreciate our friendship, and how nice it is to uh, be able to turn so many different directions to get support in yeah. whatever we're going through. For sure. And the truth, sometimes, the hard truth. Yeah. Because sometimes the hard truth is needs to be said, and that's what I really appreciate with you guys is when those yeah. hard truth moments have, have have been spoken. Yeah, do you want me to be honest or nice, right? Take <laughs> yeah. your pick, yep. right? And yeah. honesty doesn't always feel nice, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I hate for this to end. This is awesome. We'll need to do it again, honestly. I would love to. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for having me. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you, Slay. Yeah. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, this is fun. Um, so here we are. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. And I love you guys for all your support. I can't believe where this is at. We're ranked in the top 100 in mental health in the world. Blows my mind. Yeah. Um, we're trending on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. I've got amazing sponsors. You know who you are. Thank you so much for getting this out. To This will go out to about 450,000 people. And uh, wow. I know that there is some wisdom <laughs> spoke here today from a bunch of old guys right now who's been through a lot, right? But don't you guys still feel like you're 30? I, my head, I'm like, and then I look in the mirror and go, oh, well, no, I'm a little older than that. But like I said, Sometimes we're together. Sometimes it's a 17-year-old that creeps in. Exactly. That's, that's the one that scares <laughs> the hell out of me. In my head, we're all 18. I see the same 18-year-old 18, yeah, like, versions of us. For the record, I am the youngest one in the room. Yeah, yeah Pratt uh, got held back three times when he was a kindergarten, <laughs> and he, he always touts that he's the youngest, but really, no, no, he actually really is. I would also like to point out he's also the largest. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, for those out there, there's a lot of little teeny people in here. Yeah, that so is the largest is They made 3D t-shirts like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, like it's coming right thank in. you guys for tuning in. I love you guys. And, and again, um, please share this with everyone you know. Um, they'll get some good uh, wisdom from this. And I uh, love you guys. And until next time. <laughs>